Get your Bibles. Amen. Part of uh, the reason why the response has been the way it's been on these messages is because um, people are into some stuff. I mean, stuff, man. I couldn't believe some of the comments I was reading, like the mixture of the, the occult with what people perceive to be Christianity. Are y'all there? So I want to talk a little bit tonight. Go over to, uh, let's get some theme scripture tonight. Uh, go to Ephesians 6. Now, I believe according to Galatians 6 and 6, and then you read that. Don't just hear me say Galatians 6 and 6. Go read it. Uh, it says that... Um, that if that 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 if you are instructed in the word, then you must share all good things with your instructor. I told you I don't I believe in giving by obligation. In other words, I believe if you receive, you give. And I believe because you're receiving from this ministry, you, you know, realize the, that that we've put uh, these free videos on YouTube for years, and I'm just you know, and this video, I'm listen, we get all around the world these messages blessing people all around the world. Everybody, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many calls and emails we get. Uh, talking about how God is transforming people's lives, bringing deliverance and healing and restoration. And many people are saying they don't even have a word like that in their city. And 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 so, um, and which is something else that we're gearing up for to, to do some church planning. But anyway, um, but uh, if you are receiving from this ministry, the Bible instructs you to share uh, or sow back into what is feeding you. So if I'm feeding you as a pastor, as a man of God, I don't care if you got a church or a pastor, uh, but if you're coming to, to and receiving from our channel and receiving from these videos, which are being provided to you for free, then you are obligated to sow back and share back with this ministry because you are being fed. That's biblical principle. That's the principle of Galatians 6 and 6. Galatians 6 and 7 goes on to say, uh, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. It's talking about sowing into a man of God. We use that scripture wrong. When, whatever you sow into a man of God, that and that only shall you also reap. If you sow sparingly into who's feeding you, then you're going to reap sparingly. But when you are liberal to those who are sowing the spiritual food into you, then, uh, then, then you will reap uh, liberal. And so uh, it's very important how you take care of an anointing, how you support the anointing and anointing that's, that's sown into your life. Don't leave. And I'm not just talking about me. Don't ever take men of God for granted. Somebody who is anointed, sowing that word into your life. Don't ever uh, uh, mistreat that or, or take or be common with that or feel that you don't have a part to play in their support. Because the Bible says, if I if, if, if I sow into you my carnal, what is it that I reap your, if I sow into you my spiritual, what is it that I reap your carnal? In other words, we supposed to have a reciprocating relationship. If you come to YouTube and you're receiving from those videos, then the Bible obligates you to begin to sow to so back to sustain my life. If the spiritual word of God is sustaining your life, then the Bible says you must share all good things with me, meaning your natural things should sustain my life. That's how you build a relationship. Uh, with a man of God, and that's how the anointing flows into your life. So that's why it's so important for you to uh, to understand obligation giving. You know, I don't, I don't like all of the gimmicks and tricks and playing the games. I believe that if you're receiving the word, if, if yokes are being destroyed, if God is move, removing your burdens and, and, and your life is getting better, then that means you're receiving the word, the anointed word is breaking the yokes, and uh, you have an obligation at that point. about deliverance and stuff and what we what I try to teach people is that you're gonna have to learn how to fight for yourself. Amen. Amen. So Ephesians 6, this is a theme, these these are theme scriptures that we uh stand on. Amen. Uh part of the problem with the modern church is they've been uh They've been, um, I don't know what the word, kept infant, kept like an infant, literally immature. And uh, immaturity uh, is a curse, amen. Uh, it's actually a condition of not having strong uh, uh, fathers and mentors. It's a curse. It's what uh, Malachi said, that if uh, the, hearts don't, the hearts of the children don't turn back to the fathers, then I'll strike the man with a curse. The curse is eternal immaturity, meaning never growing up. This is what the church is full of now. 
because uh, children will go off eat stuff that's not proper because they have not been matured to learn what to feed on and the influx of all this information is becoming destructive amen you would think the more knowledge you got the better you would be but it's becoming destructive because people cannot necessarily discern what's uh, edible what they should be eating on to strengthen their faith and what opens the door to demonic doubt amen meaning doubt based on spirits causing you to doubt your foundation in Christ amen so get your foundation give my sons one more hand thank y'all amen as I said before you really need to be interceding for these young men as well as us but intercede for these young men amen trust me when I tell you it's not easy they are going through their own level of warfare it's funny how the church judge stuff but they won't pray and I'm not saying nothing going on with them now, nothing that I know of I mean well there's well, something going on with everybody but uh, the church needs to learn to intercede. We are so gossip, uh, Wendy Williams style minded that we just titillate for something juicy. Amen. That's why I said before I go out, I'll just go on my own island. You'll be wondering where I'm at. Amen. But anyway, um, but I, I want to give you a, uh, are y'all there? Prerequisites for warfare. You can't spell that word, so let's just <laughs> let's leave that word alone. Ain't no need to just sit there and go write something that don't work. Just <laughs> then you'll go read your notes and say, What was it? I don't even know what that was. What did he say? <laughs> Friend is on. They don't know what I said. <laughs> um let me break it. Let me let me let, let's break it down smaller before you go to war. That's the name. Before you go to war. Amen. Because many people get in trouble by getting a spiritual warfare mentality and starting to attack things that's above their grace level. Are y'all there? There are things that are above your grace level. You must know that. Well, stop this thing from making that noise. It's distracting me and turning off one. Um. Part of the reason many people, uh, well, I don't want to say add to, but increase, they increase. Increase their warfare is based upon the fact they come against something that is on another level spiritually. Now, I know we got the name, the blood, but there are levels to warfare. That's the reason why the Bible calls you a soldier of Christ, meaning you enlisted in an army, and no army it has a uh, all one people. There's no all privates and no all sergeants and no all generals. There are levels, amen. As you begin to mature, um, you graduate to fight another level of devil. You'll never be done fighting till Christ come. That's when uh, the wicked shall cease from troubling when he come. But as long as you are in this flesh, you got to fight. And the fight uh, never gets old because when you master one level, in order to keep you in faith, he must allow the next level. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This, this, this strengthens you and causes you to become stronger for the next level. The goal is to become more than a conqueror. The Bible says we go from, we go from faith to faith. Glory to glory. Glory is weight, meaning what he places... Him placing him more of himself upon me. I said glory is him placing more of himself upon me. So I go from, from one level of the weight of God to the next level of the weight of God. And as he places more of his weight upon me, I attract new, uh, new, 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 new devils. If you understand boxing, boxing sort of starts out that way. Guy started out as a nobody. But once he knock out a few cats, everybody in the world won't fight him now. This is how it works. You attract your fight based upon your overcoming status. Your status changes, amen, in the kingdom as you begin to break generational curses and conquer uh, familiar spirits and demons that was in your life and family. Your status in hell gets changed, but your status in heaven gets changed. And there's new 
their, their, uh, uh, the, your, your, even your, your angels begin to uh, become stronger in your life as you become more of an overcomer. Angels move based upon your ability to stand in faith. Amen. So what are we fighting? The, come on. What are we fighting? The, what are we fighting? The what? The good fight of faith. So the devils are only coming to do what? Fight and steal my faith. My belief in the most high. So I need to have the God kind of faith and the job of the enemy is to attack my faith. Are you there? So that's what my fight is because if thou can't believe all things possible. So he's trying to take away my ability to manifest the impossible of God by attacking my faith with the demonic. You got what I'm saying? Okay. Now, uh, let's give you some theme scriptures because I want you to know there are qualifications. Now, I, I'm not saying this to frighten you or to make you think there is something God is unable to do. God is, God is, uh, God is, 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 God can do anything. He is, he is infallible. Amen. But you are not. And the reason why it's important for you to understand qualifications for warfare, because what if I gave you a child a, a, a shotgun? You, you grown and can't hold a shotgun. You ever shot a shotgun, it'll break your shoulder if you don't know how to shoot it. You see no YouTube video, they shooting the gun fly out. Well, that's what happens is, uh, so, uh, so you need uh, 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 to start out with something you can handle. Amen. And as you begin to handle that level, uh, many of y'all warfare is just getting over family devils. People that come against you in your family because you got saved. That's Some of y'all warfare has just been there for years. You still ain't figured that out. You can't handle nothing else. Amen. Now, so what I want to show you tonight is some of the most tragic things. I saw one of the greatest men of God I knew. This brother was called the dream. I can't think of what he was. He really did a lot of work in dreams. And uh, he died. He did a lot of warfare against witches, and he died, and I didn't know why. And after that, the Lord began to reveal to me some things about him, and it was that he walked in a place where he wasn't truly understanding the warfare. He stepped in some place. Many deliverance ministers, if you study their life, you'll find they died. A lot of them died prematurely because they didn't understand the, they underestimated the power and pettiness of the enemy. Did y'all hear what I said? Power and pettiness, meaning the link that would seem petty to us, but it's not petty to Satan. The stuff he would do that just seems petty, and we overlook that he would, we overlook the fact he would work on one problem for 30 years. So that's too petty. We think a person would give up. No, he's not petty. I mean, he is petty, and he will continue to fight even when, we think something is so minute, but he knows uh, uh, um, it's the little foxes that destroy the vine. Meaning, despite, he doesn't despise small beginnings like we do. He understands everything starts as a seed. Even the warfare against you was in this, was infantile when it started. And over years, it'll grow into a, 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 a habitual problem that, will, if, that if goes unchecked, it will be the destruction of your life and probably the lives of your children. Y'all there? Let, let's get the word. Okay, now, every time I say the word, I, I'm just, the point I'm driving home is qualifications or um, pre no, no. Before you go to war. Say before you go to war. Now, stick your finger in Ephesians 6 and go over here To um, Matthew All right, go to uh, Matthew, uh, Luke, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 14. Real quick, I just want to touch on this real quick. 
because one of the reasons I'm ministering is because we have a lot of people that are calling and they are, um, especially some of the messages I preach, uh, they get, the light come on and they begin to realize, oh, I see what it is. And they do what most people do when we're about ready, when we get excited about a subject, we start researching. And they start running across different sites that are either above their grace or that are demon traps. Meaning things that is out there that will titillate those that are curious. Say amen. See, if you're not careful, you'll begin to study so much of the demonic that you start studying, uh, you start studying voodoo. Or you'll start studying witchcraft. And that's a trick that Satan has for those that have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Meaning they want to know about deliverance and they want, and a lot of it, it's the same way that people who have a controlling spirit go into psychology as a field. They want to understand the mind to manipulate the other people. I'm, well, most people in psychology went into it because they wanted to understand the mind to manipulate the mind based upon the fact they were hurt by people and they would think that if I can learn about the mind of people, I won't be hurt again. The back, the real back end is the spirit of control. Amen. Is, are y'all there? Now don't be writing me about no well I took up psychology. Well you try and control folk. Because has a psychologist ever healed anybody no the goal is manipulation amen now I don't mean people don't genuinely want to help folk but they can't help folk because the answers that seek is spiritual amen now all right what was I saying before that go Luke Luke 14 verse uh, 28 it says uh, for which of you are you there Intending to build a tower, sit it not down first. Sit down first. Did y'all hear? This should be, this would help you in all your bad decisions. Sit down first. Don't be calling the church after you made your bad decision. When you call is in the period where you sit down, you think about it, and then seek godly wisdom. Don't be at divorce court talking about help me now. Go on, do what you're going to do. When you needed my help, you should have came in the sit down place before you went and got papers. And Because what you're trying to do when you call after you've made a decision is trying to get me to either talk you out of or help you to see that your bad decision wasn't as bad. No, are y'all there? No man builds a tower. First, he sits down. Come on, say sit down. Sit down. Lord, I can stay right there because this is, this is one of the most unstable, city-jumping, church-hopping, pastor-seeking generations because they never sit down before they make a decision. We have a call that comes almost every day that says, I'm about ready to move to your city. And my wife tells them every time, sit down. You have not even visited. You don't know if we like you. Well, come on. We, we, you know, we, we ain't got the, I'm a shepherd. I ain't got to accept you. Real shepherds don't accept everybody. This ain't no come as you are here. Come and be changed. But you could be a wolf. So we tell people, visit one time or two times. Get to see us and know us. And see if you like us. Because when you run into this wall of order, you're going to call it control. And you're going to be ready to go. And you're going to say, the Lord told me. Then you're going to go online and type, that church wasn't as loving as I thought. We didn't even ask you to come. Ain't no sign in front of this church saying, come on. We, I am not saying that. Because I understand. I don't want all. Jesus had 12. I'm, I'm cool. I don't have to have everybody. Because you have to be able to go through the warfare that it takes to sit here. The more revelation you get, the more attack comes. The Bible says Satan comes immediately because of the word Satan. 
So you ain't going to be getting your demons revealed and not be getting attacked for it. So count the cost. Y'all be surprised how many. We had a brother just recently. Brother got on the road. He was from Washington. No, he, no, he was stopping in Oregon. He was from where? Oh, oh. Brother was from Oregon. I hope you're watching, brother. Oh, this ain't streaming tonight. Okay. Well, I can really say some stuff tonight. The brother, without contacting the church at all, got on the road from Oregon. When he decided to call, he was in Oklahoma. On his way here. Saying, I'm going to come and live at Grace Retreat. And when the man of God sees me, he will definitely know that I'm supposed to be with y'all. This is what we deal with. Y'all think this is a game. We really deal with this stuff. I'm, I mean, man, this, is, this is beyond out of order. This is just like, I'm going to tell you, I'll be at the church. Somebody need to greet me. I ain't got no job. Got nowhere to live. Well, I sleep in my car. We don't do that here. But because that man of God has got the word I need, I'm just going to do it. Now, you know what, we, what I'm thinking in my mind already. This, this brother's he's blown to and fro. Soon as he, now, just so happened the day the brother came, we, I just happened to stay out at Grace Retreat with my wife. We was, I said, I'm going to stay out here this Wednesday getting some work done, and I'll just let somebody minister for me. So I wasn't there. So the brother couldn't last to that Sunday because he was blown. He didn't count the cost. He didn't ask the correct question. What if they don't receive me? You don't know me because you see me on the video. Those that sit under this church know so one of the main problems and one of my greatest function is to bring people into order. That's why I rebuke witches so much. They come here all the time. Witches come here all the time. That's why this church ain't big because this ain't for everybody and I don't pretend for it to be. Are y'all there? So the brother didn't count the cost. So he jumped at the opportunity not even knowing who we were. So we began to we got elders here and people that can greet people, talk to people. So they begin to call the brother while he's on the way to like, brother, are you sure this is not how we do things here? Uh, I had elders Sherrod talk to him, brother, this ain't the way we do. You may not like when you come and realize we're a church of order and we don't do that. You can't just show up like that. We don't have no accommodation quarters and no way to do, you know, we're not going to, don't make us responsible for your bad decision. We didn't tell you. Like, people call her and talk about, well, what do you think about me getting a divorce? Nothing. We're not going to be responsible for that. Well, will you counsel me? No. I will not counsel you. Why? Because you're trying to put on us your problem. You did not count the cost. Say amen. amen. So, uh, told the brother, no, man, you can't, you know, don't, you know, it's not good for you to do that, uh, it's, 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 you know, it, it probably won't be beneficial for you to do it. We don't do it like that, brother. Well, I know the Lord, see? This spiritual talk, instead of him understanding that some, the voice of wisdom is speaking to you before you do what? Make a decision, and, 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 and it'd be the wrong decision, and you have to waste your time and, and start over and be offended. But because he was not used to order, this is why it's very difficult for me to deal with people that don't have a pastor because I know they don't know order. And the minute that you run into some, a pastor trying to tell them something, they're going to say they're trying to control me and that church ain't right. So what I do is I tell you, go to your own pastor and ask him where the brother didn't have none. He said, well, you are my pastor. And I said, I don't know how I can be your pastor if I don't know you. Pastor is not, pastor is a, is a personal, intimate thing. It means a relationship with sheep. Say Amen. The, 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 the sheep of my pasture. My sheep hear my voice. And if they hear my voice, they will be sitting here. It has to be a... People can encourage you and help you, admonish you, even speaking to your life, but they cannot shepherd you from a long way. 
You have you have to be in an assembly where the man of God can look at you and see your face and get to know you and know your spirit. And so then when he looks out and sees he's not, they not there, so-and-so not there, and I can say, hey, let's go see where so-and-so is and they ought to go see, you know, because that's pastoral care. Amen. Then you can come with these, your issues and your problems because you are physically here and that gives me a physical way to help you. If you call me with an issue, I can't help you because you could be lying. You could tell me anything, and I will be speaking into something that I don't have the other side of. So pastors understand that, and this is the reason why this generation is messed up, because they think internet means connection. Doesn't mean connection. Because true kingdom of God building is about relationship. Amen. Are y'all there? So it's, so it's not that you don't, it's not how we don't operate that way. Come on, talk to me. Now, it says, so every problem in your life started because you didn't sit down first. You, you jumped in there. These preachers are not teaching y'all how to hear the witness of the spirit. Notice how they say the voice. The witness of the spirit. Because what is happening is because you have not done enough purging of yourself that you mixed the voice of God with your voice. Meaning when you get emotional about something you really want to do, you accidentally hear God. Like God told you that was your husband. I know God sent them. I know God sent them. And then you walk into it with a false prophetic word. Yes. Now you're trying to get, it's like a person that steps on the stage without a script. And as they out there acting, they want somebody to write it for me as I'm acting. No, sir. You get the information, then you step out. Say amen. So you spend your life trying to get God to affirm or confirm your prophecy. God does not have to back what he did not initiate. Who am I talking to? God, I ain't even trying to preach this. So we run, so then we get online and we find people that would agree. We run a church that agree, and then we won't find nobody to agree. Then we get cynical and think everybody's wrong. Because you run here and that pastor say what the last pastor said. They all together, girl. See, here they all together. These churches ain't right. No, they told you what the last pastor said. Talk to me. Amen. I wasn't getting on that. Amen. I really wasn't. But we need that. Right. So if you would have, how much money have we lost? Right. Not sitting down counting the cost. Right. I, I can raise my hand. I can be included. Amen. I count myself in that. Amen. You know how much money I lost? I remember losing $50,000 in a business deal over some land, some real estate. Fifty grand. Rushed into it because I was thinking about the profits. Didn't count the cost of what it was going to take to do it. So I know what I'm talking about. When you don't sit down, say amen. See, a true shepherd should be able to set you down and say, sit down. Sit down. Let's, let's, let's give you time. Do you know why people need time? Time proves whether or not what they say is really true. All you got to do is wait. All you got to do, because if a person is unstable, they'll change their mind whenever they have to, uh, whenever patience begins to work or work in them, they'll change their mind. Because they are, it, now, let's go deeper. It is a spirit of stagnancy and limitation. That keeps them, like James said, being blown by every wind of doctrine so they never build anything. They never have any roots because as soon as 
the roots are about ready to form based upon the pressure of the place that God sent them. I said the pressure of the place, meaning right where God sent them, the same pressure of the first grade trial that they was running from show up in that place. And then when roots are ready to go down based upon the pressure it takes, they uproot. And so they go start over. So they become 50 years stagnant. They never get a revelation. It's a spirit causing me to never connect based upon my need for people to be perfect. I'm, I'm really preaching better than they talking. But see, this is one of them. This ain't no Hebrew. This ain't no, this ain't no who are we. This is that gutting word. Now, if I was to come to a person's church, what you know, we tell people, if you know about us, we don't even open the doors of this church often. We do not. People have to come and say, I want to join, but y'all never open it. I say, are you ready to join? We'll open it next week. Because you got to come. What I tell you, keep coming. Keep coming. Why? Get enough, get enough of these pokes. You got to get a chance to be offended. We, see, we gotta have a chance to offend. So something I've said, if you're still trying to join, I must not have offended you yet. <laughs> because that's supposed to happen. Why? Because I'm saying keep coming, because I want you to count the cost. So you don't make an emotional, like you've done all of your life, make an emotional decision without the sense or the ability to walk it out. And if anything is wrong with this generation, it's unstable. And it's based upon the fact of the false prophetic movement in the 90s and 2000s that told people that people that called themselves prophetesses and prophets and apostles. And look at the names we have now. Chief apostolic bishops and <laughs> with no church. Five people. He's a bishop. Nobody has released authority in the kingdom over them, but she's a prophetess. And people get mad when I don't acknowledge that stuff because I believe if you are it, the title will manifest in your action. No, no, no I ain't call you nothing. I've been Pastor Steve for 16 years. Never, even though a walking prophetic, have some apostolic man, I never use that. It don't matter to me what you call me. Did you get free? The proof is in the fruit. But the titles, and you know where they get titles at, bro? They go to these churches to get 10 people. Now, when they got 10 people, the leader's going to give everybody a title. That's how they're keeping them. So you go in there, and, and, and 12 people, 10 of them are ministers. Two of them are elders. And their children is who they preaching to. I wasn't getting on that, y'all. Come on. Come on. Come on. Maybe it's because we ain't live streaming. Maybe. Maybe that's because I'm doing this. Are y'all there? Come on, say sit down. Boy, that ought to be just a, 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 that should be a qualification right there. Sit down. Sit down. Are y'all there? Uh, and count. Say count. Then do you know what that means? That means literally make a pros and cons. Literally. Make a pros and cons. The problem is, oh, I preached some messages on, on this before, pros and cons. The problem is, because you make such an emotional decision, you really live by your emotions. You list the pros. You only see the pros because you're walking in a fantasy world. You only see the pros. In other words, you, what your emotional longing has led you to see is only the pluses. Like people jump into marriage for the pluses. They didn't really think it would be for worse at times. They thought that's just what you say when you're standing there. That's just for better, for worse. They, they thought that's, that, was all, that, was just a, that was just a word. They had no idea to qualify a real biblical marriage. It's got to get worse. So when the worst comes, they shock. But they forgot 
You create, you made a covenant when you said, I will. So then they come to me and they want me to nullify a covenant. And I remind them that you said you do. So go back and do. Well, he's mentally abusing me. and he Go back and do. Well, he's abusing me. Call the police. They be come, don't they come with that? Well, he, if, if somebody in 2017, if a Negro put his hands on you, don't come to church. They won't, you know, I ain't call the police because ain't no real abuse. Call the police. Don't come to me. And what they say, oh, I'm not going, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not going. Well, okay, well, then you ain't being abused. You just have a difference of opinion. Don't like the fact we don't love like we used to. What's love got to do with it? You made a commitment. See that? See? See how much order that was? You see how much order that is? Now, 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 you know what that did? That killed twenty people from coming to me. I bet not go. To, I, don't, I bet not go to him. I bet not do that. I bet, not, I bet not go to him because I don't think he ain't going to agree. This is the point of the service. Uh, you know, I'm used to that the other grass sitting there. This point of the service where the Lord is beginning to speak. No, 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 not, not in me. In them. I'm not sure if that's the place that the Lord is leading. And then once the Lord starts speaking to them like that, they begin to, it's a critical eye comes. And they start looking at the little stuff. And church ain't as big as I thought it was. Why is wife sitting up there like she better than everybody? See that? Yes, I'm, I know Negroes. I know how they think. That's the way they, it's really a spirit. If he really loved the people, why he got that chain on that door? Why he need all that? Why he need all of that for? Why he got all these trappings of, of the world on? I had somebody write that day. Why you got the trappings of the world? I thought about that. Elder, I thought about that. Do you know, you know the story of the prodigal son? The Bible says when the prodigal son came home, his daddy gave him a ring. This is this Judas mind that got mad when the woman broke the alabaster box on Christ, got offended. And the Bible specifically said he didn't care nothing about the poor. They just wanted to steal the box. That's the people that talk about they don't like giving and tithing and all of those stuff. It ain't got nothing to do with money. That's why I told people tithing ain't money, bring your groceries. We ought to have canned goods stacked up downstairs. Since tithing ain't got nothing to do with money, we don't even need that because we give, we, we, have, we serve dinners every Sunday here. Me and my wife cook it. That's the way we stay humble. We serve the people. So don't, 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 don't get in there. These are internet prophets. Internet prophets. Now, are y'all there? Come on, say sit down. I can't get off of that. Sit down. You don't know how that will save you. It will save you. Sit down. Count. Come on, say count. count. Pros and cons. Come on, do you, have you ever made a pros and cons list? You do that whenever you're going to make a decision. But because you've been trained to be deep and be spiritual, you don't, you, you don't think that your mind being involved in a decision is important. It's all spirit. Oh, the Lord showed me in my spirit. That has nothing to do. The Lord did not kill your mind. You sit down and you think. So that means that when I'm making a pros and cons, okay, let's use the typical thing. You meet a person that you think may be the one. Oh, don't we go spiritual then? Oh, we just go spiritual. We just, we just, we just, oh. just heard his sound and his deepness. Now, what needs to happen is somebody need to tap you on your shoulder and throw a big bucket of water in your face <laughs> to snap you out of that and say, remember you heard that all oh, the last four times. Let's make a list. Let's list. Pros. 
kinds. Or is he a professional kind? You got to find that out. Is she a professional con? So you start listing the pros. Oh, they look nice. Okay, I like that. Attractive to them. Dress nice. Look how superficial these are. Had nothing to do with nothing deep. Nothing to do with, with, with nothing the future. Then you go over here and say, well, what are the cons? Well, sometimes they interrupt me, but that's all right. So excuse in the cons. <laughs> see, you see what you do? See, now why? Because I'm making this list based on what I want instead of what is. So when I list the pros, I list real what really is an asset. Say a real asset. They got a car. It's a pro. Job. Pro. They got their own plate. Plus, plus, plus. Pro. <laughs> They go to church. That's not a pro. Where they really teach, not a pro. And live the word, pro. They ain't got no kids, pro. Now they got offended on that, but that's a pro. That's a pro because that means the money, the money we have can go with us. So I ain't got to pay for nobody else's stuff. That's a pro. Don't mean a man won't see that as a pro. I mean, wait a minute. That's a con. That's a, that's a con. That's a con. A pro would be they got kids. Baby daddy pay child support. Take care of will. I ain't got women. Okay, pro. Because I'm not telling brothers you can't get involved with women. Gotcha. I'm not saying that. Everybody can be changed. Say man. Okay, con. <laughs> con. No job. Con. Baby mama steal is not legally dealt with. Con. Live with mama. It's a con. Now, once you get, come on now, come on. Once you get your pros and con list, what time is it now? It's time, no, 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 no. no. It's time to talk to people that really know them. Because some of the cons could be where they get on it. You know, some stuff ain't always what it seems. So you go to the people that know them and you say, you know, what do you think about this and this and this? And you, you know, you, 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 you evaluate to see if some stuff that was a pro really is or if some stuff that was a con may not be. So, but you evaluate by investigation. Why? I'm counting the cost. Because if I give you me, after I give you me, it's my fault. It's my fault. Because I had all the chance and time in the world to investigate you. But I cut off my head and went well, only with my heart. And now I'm blaming God and that church. You know, that church that was more for you and wasn't for me, I'll know something. No, you had opportunity. Right. Say, come on, say, count the cost. Count the cost. Can we go on? Amen. Lord, I'm trying to get to this. I can't, I, this is for somebody. This is, I'm preaching about the Spirit. This is for somebody. This wasn't my message, but it's going to work tonight. Y'all there? Lest, no, no, now, now, now what do you do? Say count the, count the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Now, why is that important? Because less happily after he laid the foundation and not able to finish it, all that know about it begin to mock you. Why are you mad when people talking about you now? 
The Bible said that's what they would do when you start something and don't finish it. Oh, that's good enough. When you start, when you, that's why I try to tell people, stop saying God told you stuff. Stop it. Stop. That means you're immature. If you have integrity, your word is good. See, when I came to my wife to marry her, I didn't say God told me to marry you. Because that would have been me putting the responsibility on God. I knew my word is good. I want to marry you. So that when times got rough, I can't blame God. Because my word was good. The problem in our generation is we got people that are so super deep that they got to use spirituality to hide their unaccountability. So when somebody always telling you God spoke to them, that is a not, that is an unaccountable person. I'll guarantee you they have debts they haven't paid, people they done messed up on, because they live out of manipulating people with God said. Because when you are trustworthy, your word is good. I said I said this. You're there. The sign of maturity. Okay, I'll put it, put, put it more plain. If my son, he's right here, he's, he's a grown man. If every time I had to say, boy, do this. Don't do this. Boy, don't do this. Do this. Wake up. Don't wake up. Sometimes I do have to say this. Don't wait. Do this. Do this. Do this. Like he, got, he can't live without me totally, you know, everything. Well, then he's immature. The sign of the father trusting you, he knows you have my laws written in your heart. Amen. You know what to do. I don't got to, every day, what do I want you to do? I don't got to do that to you. You know what to do because you're mature. I trust you to do this. So then you begin to get integrity and your word becomes strong. Anybody that got to constantly tell you God told them or showed them something. They are manipulating you. That's how y'all get messed up. See, the Lord showed me in a dream. The same dream you dreamed about me, why can't you dream about you? Most people that use that God said are unstable. Their life does not match the level of spirituality they're claiming because their life is in chaos and utter shambles. That's like a person counsel you about marriage and they divorcing somebody. Get out of my face. You ain't got no counsel for me. Your fruit is what I see. Not what you say. Come on. I'm talking about integrity. So now that you have failed at what you attempted, now you calling everybody haters. The Bible said they going to do that. If you start something and don't finish, that's why they hate on you when you backslide. Everybody know you found it. Oh, I thought you would say, "What?" They supposed to do that. Why? Because you started something and didn't finish, so you're being mocked for not counting the cost. So everybody ain't no hater. That church, they wasn't no haters. They was dealing with you based on the fact you started something and you didn't finish it. You started that marriage and you didn't finish. I said it. So don't be mad when they mock you. Because see, people don't know all of the bad stuff that y'all was dealing with. You know what they remember? Girl, he's just awesome. I love him so much. The final guy, that's the one for me. I love him. Yeah, mom, I love her. And I was going to be with her. Yeah. And she heard everything. And I was gonna... That's what people hear. Then you show up because you've been fronting, not wanting to know all of this stuff. Y'all been in there like tights and them. And now you show up saying, I can't stand, I'm ready. People, you, now you want people's mind to shift like that based upon the fact you ready to give up. So then people begin to let you know. I thought y'all were saved. So they, they just hating on me. No, they not hating on you. You didn't count the cost. Oh, that's a good word. 
This is that personal responsibility word where we no longer can blame God for where we are in life. You're going to have to take some responsibility. Say amen. Let's go deeper. You said the Lord led you to that church. Yeah, you said it. God is leading me. Oh, thank you, Lord. He lead him. Thank you, Lord. They are so wonderful. And then soon as that pastor cuts you, and it ain't even a cut. You know what it is? It's sit down. Trying to bring you into order, keep you from making haste to sit. There ain't no love in that church now. Now the Lord is speaking something else. You blow your witness by making people think God is schizophrenic. What you need to do is go back and do your first works over. Meaning the last place you truly heard God, you start from there. Too much? Oh, now, y'all ain't going to shout on this. I'm, I'm a gutch. I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm ready to go. Got some, we got something to eat. We're going to be all right. We got things to do. We're going to be all right. I want you to understand, stop doing stuff and then not want to be responsible for the seeds you sowed. See, real, see, true men of God understand without personal responsibility, you can't make it in the kingdom because trust is built on personal responsibility. Meaning for me to trust you, I got to know you accept when you mess up. You know the worst thing in the world is for somebody to mess up or break something and won't be responsible for it? That's my pet. Oh, my God. That's, that's one of the things that I get upset about the most. Somebody look you dead in your eye. Well, I don't know. You know, I don't know if that. That's why your mama whooped all of y'all. Your mama said, you know what? I ain't got time. I, I look, I, I, this, everybody get in line. I whoop everybody to somebody. I ain't got time to be trying to get because it, it bothers you that a person would do those things and not hold themselves accountable. And without personal accountability, you cannot be promoted. You cannot grow. Even in relationships, people will get tired of you when you never say you wrong. At some point, we all mess up and we got to say, I'm wrong. Sometimes, even to our own children, we messed up. And we got to say, hey, man, I messed up. Say amen. Why? Because because that builds trust. That builds trust when a person can be wrong and admit wrong. Too much? If you did lose your marriage, it was because nobody would say they were wrong. Say amen. Nobody was wrong. Y'all there? Okay. Now, or else, verse 32, while the other is yet a great far off. Oh, no, 31. What king going to war, which is the real scripture I was trying to get to, make, going, to going to make war against another king, sit it not down first, and consult whether he be able with ten thousands to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Did y'all see that? Come on, did y'all see that? That means this is not blind faith here. This is calculated decision. Should I do this based upon all the information that I have gathered? This is what we need to teach our children. How to stop jumping and emotionally leaping and sit down and think. Before you buy those Jordans, you know you want to go somewhere on the summer, right? See, make them think. Make them count the cost. You want something for your birthday, right? Make. Why? Because the goal is to make learn, cause them to learn responsibility. You got what I'm saying? See, I don't, I don't, I don't, even though I gave my son some shoes, I was so mad he didn't even wear them shoes I gave him. I'd be upset about stuff like that. But don't have them look at you where you did it. I got money to do it. I got a job and I got some money. You live with me. You have to decide because the goal is to make them personally responsible. Come on, say responsible. Are y'all there? So This goes back to a point that I was making that there was another person that
called the ministry and said, you know, I'm going to move to, to Louisville. I forget where it was from. And, and she was saying, I'm going to move to Louisville and already ready to go. And, and we kept telling no, her, sister, please, you know, don't, don't, please don't do that. Uh, you need to, you know, we always say visit, you know, and then make sure that if you do that, you have uh, things in order. You don't see that's, that's not blind faith. You know, that's like showing up at somebody's doorstep saying, I'm here. No. You gotta have things in order. Meaning, have you looked, have you, have you, have you, have you looked at a job situation? How can you how you gonna take care of yourself? Because I don't ever want to go nowhere and be no burden on nobody. You know, I, that's just the way I am. I pay my way. You know, and so uh when the odds are insurmountable, there is a time that you sh- that you chuck it all and believe blind and just blindly believe God. There's time. But you know what? You'll have the grace to do that. In other words, there'll be peace in your spirit when you do that. But there are, but, but there are times, I'll, I'll use my own life. I remember the Lord told me don't do something. I know I heard the Lord. I made a decision that I want to do something. And, 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 and I heard right on top that, that I, I, when I say heard, it was just an impression. That's probably not a good thing to do right now. You know, but I wanted to do it. And I was going to determine. Went outside, car had a flat. I got the flat fixed to keep on going. On the way, had a wreck. Because this is what the Lord, see, when, 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 when I don't listen to the impression, he'll speak through a circumstance. See? And the main thing we should be teaching people is how to yield to the witness of the Holy Spirit when he says don't. He's not going to scream. He's just going to impress in a still small voice. That probably won't be the best thing for you to do. But you have to learn how to yield and recognize when this is an emotional desire decision and when this is really the will of God. Everything is either you or God or you influenced by Satan or you influenced by the Holy Ghost. Talk to me. The worst things I remember years ago, I remember years ago, I was about ready to make a decision. I went into this, saw what I, I saw it off the top, saw the brother wasn't right, saw the sister wasn't right, knew off the top, but I wanted to do it. And I made a decision and it cost me dearly because I overrode the witness. Your job is, the Bible says, those that are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. Your job is to learn to be led by the Spirit. Come on, say learn. Learn. How can you be following Christ and not be led by his Spirit? The Spirit of Christ will save you. I mean, he will save you from a lot of bad decisions that it would take years to rectify. What if you would have yielded to the Spirit when the Holy Ghost said, don't get into that relationship? Your credit would not need to be repaired. You still paying off stuff and figuring out how to get back right because the the Holy Spirit is always, the Bible says he gives us more grace to stand when the enemy is trying to get us to do something. But if we override it, what is the remedy? But to let you go through with what you wanted to prove to you, don't act upon your own will. How do I know it's the Holy Ghost? Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So what do I need to do in the meet? Sit down. If the Lord do tell you do something, sit down. What am I waiting on? Two or three witnesses. So I'm waiting on confirmation. So if I really believe I'm supposed to do something, I'm trusting God. If I go, if I'm, you don't even have to be at church. The Lord has confirmed many words with people that wasn't saved. All of a sudden, they just say it out of the blue. And I bet, oh, okay, that's one. The best place is the church, but not every, every time it's not confirmed that way. Somebody call or you be looking at TV, but the word will be confirmed. And you will know this is the Lord telling me to do it. But why do we fail? Presumption, not waiting upon the Lord. Is this too much? This is the majority of the problem of people that follow God. They don't wait on God. They want what they want and they mix their emotion with God's will. 
has nothing to do with God's will. It don't got nothing to do with how you feel. Say amen. Because the person you feel good about may not be the one. God gives us what we need. So you have to, you have to, you, the Bible says patience must have its perfect work. How do we stop from self-destructing? Patience. Wait. Are y'all there? Well, this, if this boss do something else to me, I'll tell you, I'm going to give you my, okay. Go on, do it. And as soon as you do that, it's a cold wind you feel when you realize I done blown it now. What am I going to do? You didn't think about that before because you never learned to hold your peace. Sometimes you got to hold your peace. Sometimes you got to take a loss because maybe the Lord is teaching me humility. Learning how to not always be right. Sometimes you suffer injustices as a follower of Christ. Talk to me. I'm trying to help you because most of the time that you feel you are wrong, that's when you make a wrong decision to get away from it or do something else and you find yourself starting over. So Satan has wasted five years of your life. I don't know. that I don't have five years to waste. I ain't starting over. I'm at an age in my life, everything I do got to be sure. It's got to bring fruit. It's got to... It's got to pan out. It's got to be sure. I don't got time. Are y'all there? Come on, y'all there? I'm done. I'm going to get done right here. Is this helping you a little bit? Go to James. Lord, I'm on something else now. Now, this is a good word. I, I now wish I was streaming this now. I really do. Lord, I know a lot of people might have needed this, but we was putting out another word tonight. Uh... Go to James 1. Y'all there? Come on, let me show you. See, these are the messages that people don't know God speak to them all. They want this that emotional high. No. This is development word. This is the word that develop you. Because a word that develop you is challenging you to see where you made a mistake. And instead of you going on in your error, acknowledge. The Bible says if we acknowledge our sin, we recover our soul. Sometimes the Lord would try to get you to a point to where it's just like with Adam when God came in the garden and said, where are you? Why are you, Adam? God knew where he was, but he was trying to get Adam to locate you. Acknowledge your own sin. He didn't. He blamed the woman. The goal was to get you to see where you are. Thank God for his grace that he will continue to convict you to give you an opportunity to say you missed it so now he can reset. You can't get a do-over or a restoration if you're not acknowledging where you are. This is too much. I know, I know, it's, I know it's heavy. I'm going on. Look at this, look at this. Are y'all there? Look at five. James 1 and 5. If any man lack wisdom, if you, what do you lack? Let him ask God. Not friend, not Facebook, not Google. Ask God. Why don't we ask God? What's the real, what's the real reason we don't go to God first? You know the answer, and what else? He going to say, wait, wait. He going to say, wait. Because God does not move in haste. Y'all there? Come on, talk to me. He says now, he says now, if you lack wisdom, ask, let him ask God that give it to men liberally, upbraid it not, and he shall give him. So God promises that if we ask him, he will answer. But what's the problem? Timing. But let him, but if you do ask, ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a, is like a wave of the sea driven, in, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Satan is killing you right here. Because he taxed your faith and caused you to be unstable. And he knows that the blessing that you asked for is coming if you can wait. But right when the blessing is coming, he hits you and make you unstable and you go over here and the blessing was coming over there. God is not a man that he will lie. 
If he said it, won't he do it? Did you not know when you ask anything according to his will, it is yes and amen? The problem is, can you stand long enough for the blessing to come your way? Can you stand in that position? Uh, that's why the Bible says, doing all to stand, stand. If you said you want to be married, can you stand long enough for it to happen? You ask him, can you stand? How long would it take? I don't know. But will you be standing there when it comes? Or will you waver? So Satan goes, the minute you release your faith, he make you waver. Once you start wavering, he knows the blessing that you ask, let me help you. The Bible says Daniel prayed to God, need an answer. He, 21 days later, the answer came. What if Daniel would have said, I'm done, I'm done. Then the angel would have been like, okay, well, he don't want the word no more. You have to learn that our timing is not his timing. And when you ask some according to his will, he will do it. But you have to be there when it manifests. Talk to me. Or will you be like a wave tossed and driven? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother... No, he's unstable in all his ways. Come on, say he's unstable in all his ways. That means... Once I become double-minded, you can't count on me for nothing. I'll be unstable about everything. Are you there? It's very important in this last hour to be led by the Spirit. It's very important. It's very important. I was reading some stuff today. I was just reading comments and stuff and just seeing how deceived. There was a sister that commented on the video. And my, 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 my norm is with a comment. And it's kind of off. I would go look up their page to see what they, you know, to see what they're actually watching. I went to the sister's page. She had stuff like burning court candles and, you know, how to get a good outcome in court and ankh lessons and how to summon the dark Lord. But yes, she was she was coming on my face saying, you're a wonderful pastor and I believe the word is good. But, you know, uh, this, I just have a few problems with how you minister. But she's into this. She was masking as a Christian. Are y'all there? And so I'm telling you that when you, if, if, if you don't understand how to be led by the spirit, Satan has so many things out there to trap you now, to, to just pull you off that way. And many of you all have been caught by a lot of those things because you don't do your homework. If you online, I can find out who you are. It ain't hard to find out nobody. You can, I mean, Everything is there. But the problem is you enter into relationships and you don't understand that people may have a Christianized veneer but what is there beneath it. The only way to be sure is to be stable. Come on, say be solid. And the only way to do that is to be around a body of believers that are solid. You can't do it on your own. I wish you could. You can't. You have to have a body of believers. You know why? Because the Bible says in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. Amen. See, one day when I go to church, I may be just as low as I can be, but when, when, when my brothers and sisters come and I hear about their testimony, see, it uplifts me to know my brothers, so then I know I can make it too. But when you're on that computer by yourself, you don't get the, you don't get the power of the congregation. So you need a church for more than word. You need it for fellowship. You need to be around the saints, around people with like faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So it's very important that you be st say be stable. Now, I know it's very hard now to find a good word. I ain't lying. The Bible says, you know, word of the Lord is scarce. I know that. But you can't stop trying. You got to keep pressing. Because you should be at the point you can feed yourself. But what I need church for is fellowship. So I don't become warped and isolated. And messed up in my mind that ain't nobody else good. Well, that's, 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 that's error. God has his people everywhere. Amen. You just have to find a place where you feel comfortable with the fellowship. The pastor got a decent word. If you're preaching on faith, you're doing, you can't go wrong preaching on faith. Faith is the key anyway, so if you're preaching on faith, you're good. But you have to be in an assembly of believers. Say amen. amen. Come on, talk to me. Amen. My goal now is to try to crush the erroneous foundation that people have built trying to, with this internet stuff. I know the internet could be a great tool, but it's hurting a lot of people because they think that they can sit on that and do that and not have a, a, a physical place where they gather with the saints. Say amen. Are y'all there? Stand on your feet, I'm done. 
I'm done. We really do need each other in this. We really do need each other. I saw a lot of horror stories in my life being saved. I remember there was a brother that was online and he met this sister online and this sister began to send him you know, pictures, not, not, not in bad pictures, but just like showing him what he looked like, showing what she looked like. And they talked for so long, he married online. Married online. Yeah, online marriage. After he married her, she sent him another picture. The picture was of a devil. I don't know how they took this picture because the picture didn't look natural, look like a soup. Best way I can say it looked like a spirit, like like somebody took a picture of the other side or something. That's the way it, it didn't have a natural look to it. And it was a big demon. And after she sent him that picture, the brother said this spirit starts showing up in his sleep and raping him. And it wasn't no female devil. But all that started because he was online. And he didn't have anybody in his life that would advise him against putting out his, and just trust him. Trusting people. I remember years ago I was in a church uh, in Nigeria and a, and a pastor had a brother come up and his brother gave a prophetic word that Satan will begin to move heavily through the internet. That witches have now used, learned to use the technology to what you stay, used to have to physically come in contact with you and build a ley line, meaning a connect, spiritual connection with you, but now they can do it through the internet. This is why so many people are demon possessed. And by they don't understand why they're under such demonic oppression. It's because Satan's technology increases too. Trust me, demon technology increases as man's technology increases. A lot of man's technology comes from that side. And basically all the technology we have is, is basically giving spirits more access to your life. So you have to understand that without a body of believers, see when I'm going through stuff like, if I'm going through something, I need to know I got a church, people in my life that love me, that's going to miss me if I'm gone, if I don't show up, you know, a pastor that can see me, that can use a step of shit, uh, rod to bring me in if I need to be. The, 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 the internet, as, as, as wonderful as it is in some things, is deadly in other things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can't have artificial relationship. It has to be tangible, tangible people. Are y'all there? We get calls every day about deliverance, every single day. And they get offended with us because we say, man, we don't do, we don't just deliver people. We don't do stuff like that. We, we got to come. We got to know you. I believe deliverance is a lot of counseling. I don't think, I believe we sit down and see what you've been in. So we go after the right spirit. I ain't going to just be shouting over you all day. I believe we talk and, and find out if you even serious or who are you? You know, I believe that. I just believe it. That's just the way I've always been. And people get offended because they, they, they got into something and they want that instantaneous. And when we start talking, no, you're going to have to walk this out. Some of the stuff you've been in was based upon the fact that you made certain covenants that need to be broken and renounced. Are you there? And if you don't have a, a, a body of believers where it's safe, then a lot of people are going around looking for deliverance and they get going to witches. Don't even know they're going to witches and didn't know it. A lot of that's going on. I'm telling you, I had somebody call me. Or was it today? Just today, they had wrote and said that they was uh, looking for deliverance and went and it was a witch. And they got more messed up. Satan got demon traps out here for people that are not grounded, that are blown by every wind of doctrine, not grounded in the faith. Say amen. amen. And so I would admonish you. I'm not, I don't, I, I'm not trying to be everybody's pastor. I don't tell people that. For me, we don't be everybody's pastor. I'm, I'm good. Trust me. I got a membership following all over the world, so I don't have to have, you know, I, don't, I, I can be content with, it, with this little church the way it is. I don't have a problem with that. But I'm telling you, you got to have a covering. Shepherds are not just the teacher. Right. Say amen. Right. Amen. And y'all there? If, if y'all if y'all would see what me and my wife deal with every day, you would be you would be grateful of a church that is teaching the truth, strong in the truth, and teaching you about deliverance and staying free, holiness. You'd be grateful because it is sad. Sometimes sometimes my heart breaks, but I'm like, what can I do? My heart breaks when I hear some of the stories of what people are into and got caught up in. One time we had somebody write and say, my my husband molesting my daughter. What do I do? 
call the police. But this person was so messed up in her mind that she didn't know if that was right. Because the brother had used the Bible to beat her down, to make her think that she was supposed to submit in all things. I said, you in a church? No. See, she wasn't in the church. Wasn't around a, a good pastor, somebody who could, you know. And that's why I'm telling you, Satan got it out there if you don't believe and, and agree with God's word. Amen? Amen. We're going to pray. My prayer today is for you to understand the need for the body. Amen. People are attacking the body every which way. I know we've had scandals. I know we've had, I had a sister write us today, write me today, and say the church is, 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 is false and it's about duality and it comes from Egypt and just all she ran on and on I went to her page and she was a witch mm -hmm. but she was putting that in Christians ear that would listen to her the, the church is the establishment of our Lord he established the church the church is called Ecclesia it's his bride he's coming back for it he ain't gonna do nothing outside of it all these people think the church is over. You are, you are mistaken. Yes, the church is messed up, but that's what the spot, that's what the washing and the tribulation and the test and trials we're going to go through is going to do. It's going to get us pure and, and white. But we got to go through the stuff that's coming in order for that to happen. But he ain't never going to be done with his church. He will never divorce his church. He's going to straighten out his church. So stop that. The church you went to might have been messed up. Maybe there's a lot of messed up ones. There's been a lot of scandals. But that's not every word. Amen. 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 And Satan has deceived you with this church hate movement that has made people lose faith in pastors and church. And now all these sheep are out there wandering around in the wilderness like a sheep without a shepherd, eating everything they don't know. And they sick and messed up and diseased and beat down. And they, and they But they poison against what they need, which is a, a, a safe place to get healed. Say so, amen. So I'm not claiming that we're perfect. I'm not claiming that we ain't got our problems, but I'd rather I understand the church is the place that the Lord sent me when I was when I was coming out of sin. He sent me there. And in that place, although there was warfare and I had to learn to fight, but them people helped me grow me and my wife was the same way into a strong believer. It didn't happen in Hebrew Israelite camps. It didn't happen uh, on the internet. It happened in a congregation of people that committed to love me out of my immaturity and my sin until I grew into a man of God. And how in the world would I think that if God used that to deal with me, how was he changing his mind when he said, I'm coming back for my church? So, so maybe you have been deceived. By listening to all of these people who are just always hating on the church. I don't never listen to people always talking about the church. I'm done. The minute I'm done with you. Because this is what Christ established. Man didn't establish it. And a lot, a lot of churches are apostate. Revelation said they would be. A lot of churches are messed up. But they're going to get back right when this persecution comes. Persecution is going to make us get right. So trust me. Don't give up on what God has established. And everybody that I've seen gave up on that, there's a curse come on their life. It's called wilderness. It's wandering. They wander. They just wander. They go over there and they wander somewhere else. It's a curse on that. So what I would admonish you to do is to get in a church that's preaching faith and learn the fellowship. Learn people ain't perfect. Get healed from your past hurts with pastors and churches. Forgive those that hurt you and then ask for forgiveness for holding that stuff because it's been poison to your life. Amen? Amen. Are y'all there? Yes. Father, we thank you for your word, your truth, your light and your understanding. Challenge us not just to hear the word but to be doers of this word. Father, we repent for times that we were misled, that we were offended and angry, that we moved in haste, made decisions that we should have waited. We repent. I repent for decisions I made. Stuff I did just wanting my own way and didn't wait on the timing of God. And I, and I grew a bad harvest. God, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. And I pray for a crop failure in the areas that I sowed those bad seeds. 
I pray that you allow me to go through the season that I've sown speedily and that I don't take years to get through the bad stuff that I've sown. And because of my repentance, I ask for a reset. Lord, reset this thing so that I do my first works over. Reset this thing so that I can grow again, love again, begin to mature again, open my heart again. Take away this criticalness, this cynical mind, this critical heart that I've gotten because I've been so far out of your will. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, fill me afresh. Bring back the joy of my salvation. The love I had when I first met you. Just to be with you. Just to pray. Just to sit under the tree and read the Bible. I was content. Before I got all this knowledge and all this stuff. Take me back to the innocent place. Hallelujah. In your most holy name. Come on. In Jesus name. And everybody said. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord some praise.